Hello everybody, MD Polo here. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to take a look at something that to me it's very special because it's a pistol that I've been looking for and try to get my hands on for quite some time. Whenever you see those little red letters, it just kind of makes you feel funny things, doesn't it? Especially when it comes in a case like this. This is a case that you normally don't see here in the US and it's mostly for European pistols. I'm lucky enough to have this in front of me, thanks to my good friends over at the Sportsman's Lodge in North Dakota. Of course, you've known them before in my channel from, they're the importers of the line of Phoenix pistols, and you've seen them with a the Phoenix red back in the Fusion line that we've shown in the channel. So they were kind enough to send me these, uh, this pistol for test and evaluation, and uh, mostly for a tabletop review. So I'm not sure this is gonna be going back to them or not. We'll take a look. But I wanted to show you first in this unboxing, and we're going to be taking a look. Oops, just bumped you. Sorry. We're going to be taking a look at the HK Mark 23. Let me put it here. It comes in a case. The case is absolutely beautiful. It just comes with the paperwork up here. You get two magazines, two mags, and of course, made in Germany by HK 45 ACP. 12 rounds of 45 ACP, you get two of them. Some people say that that may be a downside to this pistol because of the size of it, but you know, it is what it is. You have to consider when this was made. This is a pistol that was designed in the mid to late 90s. So a lot of the features, a lot of the things that, the, that this pistol brought to the market, or at least to the military, they were not anywhere to be seen. They were first to market, first to, in a pistol at the time that this was done. You get the pistol and in here, did you remove this little bracket, this little pouch here, you get your key for the lock and then you get extra O-rings and this, this, this little rubber O-rings are for the, for the barrel and we'll take a look at that a little bit later. So here it is, the Mark 23. I cannot tell you how long I've been trying to get my hands on this. So let me get the box out of the way and then we'll come back to take a look at the pistol. Okay, we're back. Taking a closer look at the Mark 23, or the MK23, as it was known in the military program, this was one of the most tested pistols probably in military history. It was in May of 1996 that the first MK23 was developed and delivered, I'm sorry, to the US Special Operations Command for operational deployment. This was also the first time that the US military went to a 45 ACP since the venerable 1911A1. During the testing of the MK23, it had to meet an incredible set of guidelines and expectations in order to be approved into the program. And one of them was that it had to fire 30,000, at least 30,000 rounds of plus P ammunition with less than, than one failure every 2,000 rounds. So remember when this was done, this is, we're talking about 1996, late 1990s. The pistols that were available at the market back then is nothing compared to what we have in the market today. So if you think about it from that perspective, what this pistol brought to the table was absolute, absolutely out of this world and a lot of it never seen before. Also, the accuracy of this pistol is absolutely incredible. Part of it is the design, the weight of it, the way the weight is distributed, but also the recoil reduction system that we'll take a look at in a little bit. Another one of the tests that this pistol had to meet and exceed, it had to have 40, 450 rounds fired and at 25 meters and produce groups averaging 1.4 inches. And within that, it had to produce 65 groups of less than one inch. Now think about that. So obviously it met those demands because it made it into operation. Looking at some of the specs of the pistol, it's of course a 45 ACP. It's got a length of 9.65 inches. Yes, 9.65 inches. It's got a height of 5.9 inches, a width of 5.3 inches, the barrel comes in at 5.87 inches. It's got a sight radius 
of 7.76 inches. The weight comes in at 39.36 ounces with an empty mag. And as I mentioned earlier, it comes with two round, two mags, I'm sorry, metal mags of 12 plus one. So that's again, a little bit anemic as far as the capacity, but you're judging it with today's ice. In 1996, 12 rounds of 45 ACP, 12 plus one, was pretty good. It's a double action, single action pistol. And the double action comes in at 11.47 pounds. The single action comes in at 5.17 pounds. Taking a look at the trigger quickly. And yes, it's, it's unloaded. Taking a look at the trigger and what you're gonna find is that it is a smooth, very smooth trigger, but it's a very heavy trigger. You look, you start pulling, you pull, you pull immediately. You're, the resistance is immediate and it just gets heavier and heavier as you pull towards that wall. And then you hit the wall there and you just got to really lean into it and go through it. And that's where it breaks. It's hard. I'm not going to lie to you. It's hard. But when you're pointing the pistol as you're pulling the sights, even though you're pulling through 12 pounds, the sights don't move. You break and the sights stay put. So you cycle the pistol and now you're gonna go into single action and look at this. There, it's very audible, it's tactile. And then from there, you just got this little tiny creep right there, you're at the wall and it breaks instantly. So again, cycles and listen to that. Just very nice. That single trigger at a pull is fantastic, is smooth, is immediate, no issues whatsoever. As I mentioned, I have medium-sized hands and I do have an issue reaching the trigger when it's in double action. The same issue that I have with CZs, with a curved hammer and with a hammer fired pistols from CZ, I always have an issue reaching that double action pull, but once I'm in single action, I have no problem whatsoever. Well, that's the downside of the small hands, medium-sized hands. Talking about that, we're going to look at the grip. For you guys that have larger hands, look at this. For a pistol that is quite a bit larger than a full-size 1911, look at the grip. Medium-sized hands, I'm at the butt of the magazine. See that? So the grip is not very long. It's not very thick either. It's comfortable. It's pretty wide as far as this dimension, front to back. Not very wide, it's not very long, which makes it a little bit of unusual. Now, what people may think is because of the di dimensions of it and how big the slide is, it gets heavy, it is front heavy. When you first hold it, it does feel front heavy. When you insert the mag loaded, it just balances perfectly and the pistol just sits vertically into your hand. It is just a fantastic feeling. But unloaded, it does tip forward. Just keep that in mind. Now, keeping a look, take, take a look at the size. We're talking about sizes. Here we have a full size 1911 that is unloaded. Okay, full size 1911. I'm going to try to do this without scratching either one and trying to get them as close. I'm not going to go beaver tail to beaver. This one doesn't have a beaver tail. I'm going to go back to back and top of slide to top of slide. So that's where we are right there. And you can see, look at the difference in length. That's the difference in length. Look at where the trigger guards are. Look at the size of that trigger guard. And then, trying to do this without scratching anything. Look at the difference in the grip angles. Make sure that I'm still straight here. There. You see that? That gives you an idea of the two, but it gives you an idea of the size of the HK. So we got a polymer lower with a, with a steel slide, threaded barrel, white metal sights, there are white dots. It doesn't have fluorescent and it doesn't have um, night sights, but it is there are, there are metal metal sights. 
It's not adjustable, but it's got the screw so you can remove it. The front side is dovetailed. Take a look at that. The controls by nature are ambidextrous. It's got the pedal release of the mag, and that is the ejection is just spectacular on this. It just shoots them out of there, even upside down. Just fantastic. So I like the paddle release. Like I said, I'm a dexterous by nature. Slide stop, slide release. And your controls back here, this is one of the reasons, one of the things that people say that you can tell that it was designed by committee. Because there were some members of the design committee that wanted the controls a certain way. Other members wanted it a different way. So you got the decocker here. It's very, very flat. I mean, there's, there's no obstruction there whatsoever. And then you got the safety. You can look at it here. So you, if you wanted to, you can carry it cocked and locked like a 1911. Disables the trigger. Or you can use the decocker and carry it in almost like a three-quarter cock like that. So very nice. I like how usable this is and that it's completely out of the way. Now, if you want to carry it and shoot it like a 1911 and use the safety as a ledge, it's a little bit less comfortable than a 1911. If you're taking a look at how they are built, here you got a very easy platform. I mean, your thumb just rests right there. No problem whatsoever, it's comfortable. With a Mark 23, it is less, it's more of a reach back. You, you, you can't just go here like in the 1911, it's back here and it's really not comfortable. So you're gonna be under it most of the time right there. I don't have a problem with that. And with a decocker being so flat faced out of the way, it really doesn't get in the way. I mentioned how ample the trigger guard is here and it is a, textured a bit in the front. And you see this hole that is here is so this threaded. This is because there were specific lights. Uh, it's a, light, a laser targeting system that was designed for this pistol, and that's how it attached here. And there was also a specific silencer that was designed for the MK23 program. And again, if you check out the Small Arms Solutions channel, he, he has the original pistols. He has the original attachments and everything that goes with it. So I encourage you to check out his channel. Walking back, you got the your, your sights, you got your your trigger, your serrated trigger. Take a look around, and of course, like I mentioned, the controls are ambidextrous. The texture on the grip is very nice. It, it's and again, think about this with the eyes of 1996. The texture that it gave, and not only that it gives, goes as the full height of the grip. It was not something you saw very much back then full texture all the way up, and I like it. A lot of pistols, especially today, they don't give you texture up here. This gave it to you back in 1996. And you got checkering in the back strap and the same checkering in the front strap. One of the reasons, and I'm jumping around, so forgive me for that, but one of the reasons this pistol is so large is because this pistol was designed to be a primary weapon. Most of the time, military, you go to your gun until you get to your, so you can get to your rifle. This was the first pistol, if not, or one of the first, my, my understanding is the first pistol that was designed for the US military with a purpose of being a primary attack weapon. So this was your, this was it. This was your primary attack weapon. So that's one of the reasons it's so big. And again, please feel free to politely correct me in the comment section if I'm misstating a fact. So you eject the mag, and to disassemble the pistol, get this out of the way, to disassemble the pistol, first you always check that it's unloaded, and it is, and you're going to bring the notch here to align it here. I'm going to try to do this around the camera, the tripod, so forgive me. It's a little stiff. It's brand new. Let's see if I can do it without popping the mags. It just pops out like that and then it just pulls right out. Taking a look at it, at the mechanisms, typical HK, very, very nicely done. And everything was designed with a purpose and with a thought process that this pistol was gonna be in the harshest environments, having to meet the toughest working operations, salt water, and it just had to excel, 
meet and exceed all expectations. Just very nicely done. Now looking at the slide and the components of the slide, here is the recoil reduction mechanism that HK developed for the Mark 23, for the MK 23. And you can see this, it's got two springs, one smaller one that is thicker and the larger one that is thinner that covers the length of the guide rod. So you got the compression happens here and then the second stage of the compression reducing the recoil. This changed when HK came out with the HK45 and then they went to a buffer system. You have a polymer buffer that rides up and down for the recoil reduction. But this thing is just, everything in this pistol is just huge and, and very, very, very beefy. Removing the barrel, you got here. You got a polished feed ramp, huge feed ramp, fully supported chamber. And here it is, you saw earlier in the, in the intro, I showed you the spare O-rings that come in with this. That's where they go. They give you spare O-rings. So this, the theory behind this is they're going to give you a much tighter seal. And on the same seal every time around your slide. And this, the theory behind it is it's going to greatly aid in accuracy. And obviously it does. Everything is perfectly machined. There are no machine marks anywhere. And this is just, this is the size of an aircraft, aircraft carrier. I mean, it's just huge chunk of steel. Very well done. So to reassemble, you just do it in reverse order. Let me see if I can do this correctly around the camera. This goes right in there. course not going in there you go then line them up line it up again you can see there's pure daylight through it make sure everything's lined up in it goes test for function and we're good so that's a quick look at the MK Mark 23, known both ways, depending whether it was a civilian or a military one. They're kind of hard to find. I was very lucky to find this, again, from the Sportsman's Lodge in North Dakota. That looks better. Retail price, if you can find it, of course, everything is a supply and demand. It also depends what comes with it and whether you have a camouflage case or whether you get this European case. The European case is a lot harder to find here in the US, but they're coming in at around $2,800. I've seen them in, on uh, Gunbroker for $3,300, $3,400. It just depends on the condition and what comes with it. But um, the Sportsman's Lodge, they were selling them for, I believe, $2,500, $2,600. And uh, the original MSRP was coming in at $24.99, but of course, no, nothing's coming in at MSRP right now. So there it is, the Mark 23. Please let me know if I said something incorrectly. It was um, something I just wanted to bring with you, bring to you as quickly as I could. This really has been a bucket list gun for me, and I'm very grateful that I got the opportunity to play with it, film it, bring it to you and maybe keep it. I'm still debating that one. So let me know what you think. HK Mark 23. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember that I upload videos every Friday morning and when I can on Wednesday mornings as well. You can find me on Instagram where you can see what's coming down the pipeline for the channel. So if you want to know what's going on and take a look at other things, please give me a follow over there. Also, some of my viewers have requested that I start a Patreon page. So I did. Patreon is up. Nothing's in there yet. I'm trying to figure out how to run that. But uh, just keep in mind that I've started that as well. And until the next time, please remember to play for our, pray for our country now more than ever. And God bless.